there was a big football skills day and went there for two evenings and was uh, sexually abused over both evenings for a prolonged period of time by, by my football coach. All I ever knew was football. I've got two older brothers, so um, born and bred into to sort of football. My dad was a sporting guy, but more rugby and uh, took to football really well. Showed some ability as a young kid, um, attracting interest from lots of little sort of local clubs. And then went off to a Butlins holiday camp uh, when I was 11 years old and came across this resident football coach there at Butlins, who was just sort of an incredible character um it it turns out now that you know his name was barry bennell um and he's abused hundreds of boys um and i think that you know butlins was a vehicle to allow him to do that along with other avenues of professional football um but that gave him the opportunity to to meet and groom uh youngsters and their dads and their mums They had a, a Boy of the Week tournament at the Butlins Holiday Camp and it was seen as a big thing. And if you won the Boy of the Week, you went to finals and then eventually went to a professional club for trials, etc. It was sponsored by the Daily Express. It was a huge, huge deal. And this guy was the coach and he took a real shine to me and, and as such then started to, you would see now as groom me um, in relation to giving me football shirts, um, talking to my dad. He was connected with a, a professional football club. So it was a case of um, trying to get me to sort of tell, tell me that I could make it through that club and and he's got the links and the power to, to sort of take me on for that ride and that on board. And, and I bought into that. He became an instant sort of cult hero. You know, he was like, he was, I wanted to be him. It's the, the influence he had on me. I, I always say I was groomed by football. He didn't really need to do a huge amount because I was already... I bought into the football world and, and being a professional, that was my dream. So when somebody comes along and says they've got that ability to do that, then, and and that's where I was groomed at Bull Lins and ultimately um, he gave me the opportunity a short while later to go to the, his house and um, there was a big football skills day and went there for two evenings and was uh, sexually abused over both evenings for a prolonged period of time by, by my football coach. It turns out that I was one of the, the earlier boys, um, being sort of 1979, 1980, uh, with, with Bennell, you know, that, but, but in particular, I think it's been shown now that organisations were aware, you know, they've talked and, and obviously there's been a lot of thing about professional football clubs were aware and they didn't do enough back then and they've admitted their responsibilities in that. So there's, there's lots of organisations, lots of shortfalls and that's where it's important to me. It's about learning. You know, if anybody's under um, any type of sort of, you know, suspected of anything, if there's any allegations, any complaints made against anybody, that has to be taken extremely seriously from the minute go. So obviously through my childhood, um, I didn't want to be in a room with a bloke on a one-to-one -one sort of basis. I had difficulties around my own sexuality, understanding what had happened to my own body, why it had reacted the way it had, um, and nowhere to go, nowhere to turn to, and just ate that up on my own. And um, then it affects things like your own sex life, it's it's an incredibly difficult thing for someone who's not been abused to understand the way that that deals with your sort of confidence with the opposite sex um and yeah it's it, it's a it's a difficult period to go through For, for me, when I started to come forward, I had gone through my criminal case and when I first did sort of media interviews, etc., it was several years after and I'd had a period of counselling. And that was the first time really that I'd ever been able to offload some of this stuff. And it's really important that you do that, that you don't bottle this up. And that's, you know, it's it's a massive thing to 
to have that opportunity to speak and feel heard and feel that and not be judged and it's difficult to do that with a family member i mean i've got supportive family members but there's only so much they want to hear about abuse and it's a difficult subject area and um people have opinions and you know a counselor is not supposed to have an opinion on on that and they don't they don't judge you in any way um and for me that was that was the important thing was to 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 get it out and to to move forward after my uh, criminal case had finished i looked at taking out civil action and and what i could do about that and i went to a, a particular solicitors who looked at my case and looked at it for quite a while and then came back to me and ultimately had looked at a few avenues and decided there was nowhere to go with my case so in theory you know the criminal case had gone there's no civil case that's the end of, of things for me um and i was doing a a, a talk i go a, around the country when asked to do talk um survivors talk about what happened to me and kim and richard were there um i was prepared to to talk about it with kim again and go through it which isn't easy um but at the same time kim i found very um very very warm very welcoming very friendly i got the impression from the word go that she cared um she was tenacious she was prepared to listen to my story she didn't interrupt me when i was telling her and she was prepared to give give it the time that it was needed um, she showed empathy she didn't judge me um, and she fought for a case when really i'd already been told there was no case for me um, another solicitor had looked at it didn't feel there was anything there um, and kim did and ultimately what happened was that um butlin settled my claim um and kim won for me and you know i'll be forever grateful for that people should come forward it's very difficult to come forward without support and i understand that i really do and you need some support around you need some way because you can see a counselor but you only see them for one hour a week maybe so you do need someone to talk to you need someone to support you around it but why should these people get away with it it ruins childhoods it ruins teenage years and it goes into adulthood if people had any idea the way that it makes you feel and think and changes your perception of life you are entitled to go forward to for, for civil claim and it shouldn't be seen as a, a sort of shameful exercise or you're just doing it towards money you're entitled to, listen to that these people have sexually abused you in a way that is indescribable um so I don't feel there should be a stigma around it. I definitely feel that people should come forward and there are people out there, um, especially Slater Gordon in my case, were, were absolutely brilliant. Um, they couldn't have done enough and, and they really listened. And I didn't feel like for once, because you go through the criminal justice system, being honest, you feel like a reference number. You don't, you just sort of part of a case almost. And, and they actually made me feel like um, like an individual, yeah.